Hi, this is Rick Gualtieri, and this is another Tales of a Midlist author. Wanted to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day weekend, um, especially if you're in the uh, U.S. Uh, be sure, please, to uh, take a few moments out of your day, um, whether you're barbecuing, beach going, or whatever, um, and remember those who have given their lives for this country. Anyway, today what I wanted to talk to you about was the concept of riding on coattails. We all have to start somewhere, and there is, and in this day and age, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to say, you know, there there are people who have probably blazed the path before before us. Um, I'm sure there are some folks out there who are writing truly unique fiction or such, but uh, and for the most part, um, if you're writing in any of the like you know normal genres, you know, there's somebody who like you know who inspired you to get there. Um, you know, somebody who's already a writer, somebody who's probably like you know famous. Maybe they're a cult writer. What have you but somebody who's like you know who's been there before that and like you know kind of inspired you i mean i'm no i'm no different in that um in a lot of cases you know we we write what we also enjoy reading so this is kind of talking about how do you use that to your advantage so first off what i wanted to do was i wanted to give a shout out to uh, my fellow urban fantasy author robert bevan he's the author of the caverns and creatures series uh, and the critical failures books if you have if you're a gamer and you haven't checked them out what's wrong with you, please do so. And I wanted to give that shout out because uh, he wrote a blog post this weekend, which, you know, I was looking at and, and it kind of gave me the idea for this, for this uh, video blog. And I wanted to expand upon some of those ideas a bit, but uh, also what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is uh, start doing that more often, you know, giving shout outs to my fellow, uh, fellow authors, you know, never a bad idea to, uh, to introduce people to, uh, to other folks who maybe they're not familiar with. Anyway, so the concept here is Okay, say I'm in urban fantasy, which I am. You know, who are the big names in urban fantasy? Well, off the top of my head, um, Jim Butcher with his Dresden Files series, uh, Kevin Hearn with his Iron Druid series, uh, plenty of others. It's pretty, it's a pretty robust category. But so, how do you like you know take that to your event? How do I target those, the the people who enjoy those authors' books? Well, first of all, you know, obviously, I'm going to make sure that like you know that that I'm that I'm making sure people know my books are about vampires, that they are in the urban fantasy category and all that stuff. But maybe I actually want to go after those specific re people who enjoy those authors. Now, there's some legit and kind of sketchy ways of doing this. Obviously, we want to focus on the legit ones, but we'll talk about a few ways that, like, you know, that, and, you know, I would personally stay away from. The first is paid advertising or uh, paid or unpaid marketing. Facebook and Twitter are awesome tools for this. Um, there are tools for Twitter, um, some paid, some free, where you can target and say, okay, who are all the people who are following this this follower or this uh, this account, and let me start following them back. And the hope is that if you've branded your Twitter account the right way, those people will look and say, hey, there's a, there's, there's a similar interest here. Maybe I'll follow you back. Typically, in this case, you don't necessarily want to do it blindly. Um, there's also a lot of spam bots out there. So if you just say, hey, follow all users of this uh, of this person, you might get like, you know, 30% you know, real people and 70% spam bots, and you really don't want to follow them. So take take some time and like, you know, and pay attention to what people are tweeting. So make sure you're like following real human beings. Facebook is probably an even better source for this with their paid advertising. Um, they let you go in there. They let you target demographics, um, you know, age ranges, interests. And also things that people have liked. So, you know, if it's a small author, you know, maybe a cult author with like, you know, an underground following, you might not find them in the list of uh, things to choose from. But if it is a large author um, or their series, chances are you'll find it. You can put it into your ads, put things out there to kind of say, you know, hey, you know, you like this, maybe you like my stuff too. Um, it does cost money, but uh, the good thing about Facebook advertising is Facebook gives a lot of information back. So you want to spend some time studying that, seeing what works, what doesn't, and continually refining that. And the hope is that uh, eventually you will hit that target audience and those people will say, you know, hey, you know, I like this author, but you're kind of similar. And hey, maybe I'll try out your stuff. Um, I will give the caveat, you probably should have decent work out there. Um, you know, you, you can you can do that, you know, with, with you know, with anything, hey, I copy and pasted like, you know, some, some, some garbage I wrote 20 years ago, never edited and such. And now I'm selling it. Hey, like, you know, buy my stuff. I typically wouldn't recommend that, you know, but the hope is that if you're looking at this series, you do have that eye towards professionalism. So speaking of that professionalism, what's a not necessarily cool way of doing this? 
Well, one thing that irks me, and I think it irks a lot of customers as well, when you see a new author out there who basically puts out their first, first book and then says, you know, if you love Stephen King, you'll love this. You know, if you loved Jurassic Park, you'll love this. And the reason I think that ticks off a lot of people is because you're offering them a promise and you may you may be keeping you may have a really good story out there but i think people have been burned by too many people going this route and realizing that you know something yeah i like dan brown but your mystery is kind of lame and it doesn't live up to it so too many people do it and it too often does not live up to the hype also i'll be perfectly honest it's kind of tacky you know to go out there and just like you know essentially like you know say hey you you love this guy's works so I'm, I'm just as good that person has paid their dues they probably have a lot of books out there they're probably well acclaimed if you're just putting out something, um, you really don't know if you stand up to it or not. You know, you need to kind of like, you know, get some get some street cred first. That being said, if you do get some of that street cred, you get a few like, you know, um, professional or customer reviews that say, hey, you know, this, this guy is just as good as X author. Um, I wouldn't put them in my blurb. Once again, typically that's it. One, like I said, people are already kind of burned on that. And two, it kind of looks tacky. You know, let, let's let's be realistic here. You know, if you slather all your stuff with just as good as, like, you know, X name person, what do you have to back that up? Now, once again, if you do get reviews with that, you do have a section on a lot of these, uh, a lot of the online marketplaces where you can put in editorial reviews. By all means, I would say grab that snippet, give it some attribution. Um, I would probably recommend if recommend getting permission before, uh, before doing so. Um, that's always just cool. Most people won't have an issue with that. Um, you know, a lot of people will, will very much enjoy the fact that you enjoyed their review and like you want to, want to utilize it. But, you know, it's it's usually cool to ask permission on that. But using that in your editorial review section is considered very legit because you did not write it. You're basically not like saying, well, you know, hey, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Read my stuff. Somebody else is saying that, which, you know, gives it gives it you know, a sense of legitimacy. Um, likewise, I wouldn't do that stuff all over like my website or anywhere I'm branding. Um, once again, it has that kind of tacky feel. Now, one area where I might say, you know, is a gray area, SEO. That's search engine optimization. That's where you're, you have your website, you have your blog, and you're adding, like, you know, keywords, dis meta tags, meta descriptions, all of that stuff. Um, that's kind of like, you know, an area where I would call it a gray area because chances are, yeah, if, if you do truly feel your stuff matches another author's or message masses, matches a genre, well, first of all, the genre keywords you should go for. But if it matches another author of their series, um, yeah, I would probably consider you know, doing so. That being said, I would also be careful. You know, don't turn into like you know a 1990s porn site where like you know where where I search for Unix and suddenly like you know at the top the top of the, of the search list is ooh chicks with dicks. No, you know don't like don't spam the crap out of things even with your SEO. And also search engines are kind of wise to this. They're a lot smarter than they were a couple of years back. Um, they'll probably see what you're doing, see that your stuff does not match and like, you know, and either rank you low or blacklist you or just like, you know, completely ignore your crap. Um, so kind of a gray area doing it in that. Um, I would probably say um, there's nothing wrong with it really. Um, just make sure that you're doing so in a focused target way and that you're not just like throwing you're just not grabbing every popular author. You're not just saying, hey, you know, okay, okay J.K. Rowling, E.L. James, uh, Stephen King, all these people would love my stuff. You know, write in different genres, you know, and unless you're writing horrific YA erotica, which don't, uh, that really doesn't fit. So those are my th thoughts on that. Um, like I said, Facebook and Twitter are probably the two best ways to like do that targeting. Um, make sure that the stuff you're putting out there is up to snuff, um, both the ads you're putting, the branding you're using on your pages, and also, most of all, make sure your work is there. You know, if you have the like reviews and the sales to back it up, um, you know, then then you can get a little bit bolder with this stuff. But uh, for right now, you know, and this series is really for people starting out. That's kind of the route I would go. You know, and just avoid the whole hey, here here's my here's my brand new book about about boy necromancers and i'm just going to say if you loved harry potter yeah good good luck with that in other words avoid that earn some street cred first like let people like you know let people you know decide for themselves if you're that good and if they do decide you're that good then you know look into using it so anyway this is another tales of a middleist author
I'm Rick Walteri, and I hope you uh, I hope you're learning a little bit from this series, and I hope you're enjoying it. I know I am. Anyway, can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thanks.